for the HPEOP, we are in a kind of an earlier stage of development, and we were lucky enough to get a California-based project going uh, in partnership with uh, the utilities in California, so in California Edison, PG&E, and uh, San Diego uh, utility as well as the state chancellor's office and, and uh, the best center. So we kind of pulled all that resource together uh, to initiate this process. And we based our definition of a high performance building on uh, a very simple definition that is in ASHRAE guideline 32-2012. And the word cord shouldn't be there. I don't know where that came from. Anyway. Um, these are some of the operational characteristics of a high performance building. Uh, some of you know that the Best Center participated heavily with the Department of Energy Initiative uh, to create national certifications for energy auditor, commissioning agent, uh, building operations professional, etc. Several of our faculty uh, participated in the DACOMS and the scheme committees. Uh, we, in fact, several years ago, did an exercise looking at the 590 competencies the Department of Energy and NIBS created just to see if how they would align with a, a two-year degree. And many of you participated in that exercise. Um, we found that as we got into this initiative, that while the DOE work was important work, and it really excavated the entire gamut of skills and, and uh, duties related to building technician work from all the way from a guy just off the street to a senior uh, building manager or director of facilities, it did not really get at the heart of high performance. And it didn't serve us well enough. There was really no, no context. It was just everything in one big bucket. However, it helped us, it really helped guide our work, which was to attempt to do a much more focused approach. And uh, looking at building operations as a very intentional uh, activity. Uh, and Ted will talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, so in how we're proceeding, we did a DACOM, and you have a copy of that DACOM. Uh, the DACOM was structured very different than what Department of Energy did. It was focused uh, much more specifically in the areas that we wanted to look at, which was high performance building operations. Uh, we had a very strong data panel, but it was California based. Uh, so it doesn't really qualify as a national data, even though it was statewide. And, you know, we're 40 million people. However, we're going to have to replicate that data uh, for as a national uh, data. Um, we got very good results, I think, and uh, we validated the data. Skip ahead. Uh, nationally, we did a national validation. You can see some of the numbers. Over 100 people doing this work or similar work validated the data from across the country. Uh, we asked them to rank the importance of each task. By the way, a DACOM is a strategy, if you will, developed by cognitive psychologists over the last 20 years or so to try to get at understanding what people are doing on the job. And it is an approximation. Uh, it's somewhat behavioristic. 
in its approach. And that's why you end up with these long lists of duties and tasks and so forth. Um, there are other strategies that can be used. And if you go to the Pet Center website and look at the case studies that are there, uh, that is a almost an anthropological approach. So as educators, one of our primary goals is to really understand what people are doing on the job, what skills they're using, what their tasks are, so that we can design our curriculum to address those needs and issues. So we understand the limitations of DACOMS, but still they're probably the best tool that we have available. <coughs> From that DACA, and, and by the way, let me just fill you in a little bit more on the pilot. So we, because this was funded by the utilities uh, as a key sort of driver, uh, they wanted to do, they wanted us to do uh, incumbent worker training. So we were required to look at the DACA and then do a gap analysis. And so how did we do a gap analysis? What we were trying to get at was what skills people currently have in building operations and what skills they need in order to do high performance building operations. Uh, so we did a lot of analysis. Hadley Hartshorn uh, was, took the lead on that. We looked at um, hash rate 90.1 uh, and uh, some other work that's been done in California and tried to derive kind of a baseline of skills. Uh, and then move from there to the to the gap. And so what you see is this the result of this gap analysis ultimately and what this content should be. Um, our typical programs are focusing mainly or most heavily in this area. And um, it, what we're looking for here is much more breadth. Uh, this, because this is a pilot, uh, we're gonna be running the pilot, seeing what the results we get, uh, how people respond to it. We've taken this, this is really, in my view, a two-year curriculum, easily. And what we've done is compressed it into uh, about 100 hours or so um, for incumbent workers. How much? Short time. Yeah, so it's very, very compressed. So, but it, but it does give us an opportunity through the pilot to explore these curricular themes, to do a lab-rich environment for our workers. Uh, we're assuming that they have a lot of this basic knowledge already through their uh, work experience and, and education that they already have. Uh, which allows us to focus more in the other areas. But obviously, just the BAS, uh, we allocated, I think, 12 hours for BAS. And, and in a real world, we needed two semesters of BAS. Um, but so we, we also recognize the limitations of this pilot. Now, we're going to be doing, we're going to replicate the pilot. John Zay is going to be participating in the first round, and then we're hoping that Lanny may uh, lead a, a second round of the pilot and just continue to learn uh, from this process. Ultimately, in the next phases, we would be taking this to a, a national data uh, and ultimately getting a certification uh, at which someone could target a two-year curriculum. That's our goal. We don't want to dictate curriculum at the local level, but we want what we want to do is create a kind of a standard uh, that it would allow an individual college faculty <coughs> to, to work with. So that's kind of the goal. And, and Ted, do you want to talk a, a little bit about this content that we're seeing? Yeah. So, you know, kind of follow up what Peter said, with, with a lot of our programs, much like we're at, co at all of our colleges, it seems that we kind of focus on very specific things or in our little Ivy Towers, and HPBOP is trying to do the overall tying of this together. And so we developed this curriculum 
with that concept in mind that this is all going to be one and it's all with a lot of hands-on type of activities, much like we're trying to do here. So um, we're taking the students to a bunch of different areas. There's nine that we're developing the day gum. Information technology, we kind of struggle with what to call that because it's basically computer skills, right? But how many people walk into this without having the computer skills? And it's really important, it's imperative that they have for a high performing building computer skills to make it worthwhile. It's, it's critical. And there's, there's more than just working on computers, they have to integrate all these different systems and you know, all stuff related to BAS. Talk about documentation involved for the commissioning process and for systems manuals. Um, it's, it's really important that they have those computer skills. And then from there we walk into just making sure they have a basic understanding of energy. We're going to be talking, probably going down level of BTU, but bringing them into utility information, how they're billed, what type of resources they have for benchmarking like Energy Star, looking at spreadsheets involved with being able to manipulate the data and actually see it plotted out. So we'll be doing that in the energy literacy. Um, systems, building systems like, uh, it is basically the historical curriculum they've been teaching, which is kind of covering at a glance because we feel that the people coming into this HPB OP training We'll have had quite a bit of that already, so we're just going to cover it, not real in depth. We'll be talking a lot about systems approach, and this is one of the areas that's taken us away from compound specific and focusing more on the overall impact of operating building and what happens when you make a change on dam or how it impacts the whole system. So we'll be looking at that, developing the systems manual. Basically, right now you walk into a building, and if you're lucky enough to find drawings, you probably find them stained with whatever water damage back in mechanical room someplace. Well, developing these systems manuals, which is a very strong part of the commissioning process, will be important for them to understand where they grab that information, how they can centralize it, and what type of IT skills or computer skills they need to help do that. So again, we're, a lot of these things, they all intertwine. You can't separate them all. It's very difficult to do that. And so as we go through these classes, You'll, in a training, they, they're going to realize that we don't have a day just on energy literacy. It's kind of woven throughout the full, um, I forget how, exactly how many days we have, eight or nine days that we have that we're doing this. It's, it's 12 days, 12 days we're doing this. It's integrated throughout the whole process. So it's not just going to be one day on energy literacy. It's going to be woven throughout. Matter of fact, with the IT, information technology, that's where they start talking about the energy. That's where we talk, start talking about systems man, because that's where the skills are developed to be able to do something. Um, then we have building automation systems, very critical component, and Brian's going to be working with us to help present some of that information. Um, energy conservation, I mean, a lot of people mentioned that in their introductions today, that they're, they're working in that area. And we're going to talk them through, and uh, Carlos, we're, Carlos is going, he's with BOMA, he's going to take us through a level energy, level one ASHRAE energy audit with, with these people one day. So it's going to be hands on, they're going to be doing it, they're going to take some information and start doing back in IT again, using Word documents that we already set up a template that they can just plug the information you get from the walkthrough of Carlos to have a, a energy audit ready to go. Um, Commissioning, another critical part, and we have somebody from Laney College who's going to help us with presenting and going through those steps. And then uh, Hadley will be talking through the continuous improvement management. And all these titles, they will be talked about constantly throughout the whole series. So it's, it's, it's interesting to me that we're, we're trying to break apart how we historically teach things and we're trying to make it flow through the whole set up and it goes right back to we have to look at these buildings from a holistic standpoint and in order for a building to be high performance the people operating that building have to do that i'm gonna leave it right there <laughs>